In this video, we're going to be going through the chart on page 132 of First Day 2024 in order to go through an algorithm in order to identify the gram-positive bacteria through lab tests, and we're going to do that through visual mnemonics. For now, I just want you to notice that there is the three, these three big categories that we're going to go in-depth into, which are the bacilli, the cocci, and the branching filaments. Let's start with the bacilli. Within the bacilli, the two important categories are aerobic and anaerobic. For aerobic, remember listeria as listerine mouthwash, bacillus as basil, and cornobacterium as corn. And this image should conjure up this fresh aerobic atmosphere in your mind because we use listerine mouthwash to freshen our breath. Uh, we use things like basil and corn um, to put oxygen out into the atmosphere because when they're plants, they're exchanging that CO2 for oxygen. Uh, in terms of anaerobic, we have Clostridium and Cutibacterium, which we put together as a cute closet here in this picture. And what we can remember about this picture is if you were stuck in that closet, it would be kind of hard to breathe. Hence, it is anaerobic. Next, we're going to move to this category over here, which is the branching filaments. With the branching filaments, we again have aerobic and anaerobic. With actinomyces, I just remember it as actin. So actin is just a protein. So is it going to have any any aerobic properties? No. So it's going to be anaerobic. With the aerobic side, I see no cardia, and I think no cardio. So if someone says you have no cardio, that might mean that you're not very athletic. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that you have no aerobic capacity. You still have some, right? So hence, we have this picture of a bacteria that doesn't look very athletic, so it is still aerobic, but not very much. And the reason why we were emphasizing that not very much is to remember the weekly acid fast. So if you have no aerobic capacity, are you really fast? No, you, but you might be weekly fast. You might be just a little bit fast. Our final section is going to be focused on the cocci. So we're going to zoom in on this section right here. The first branching point within the chart is whether the organism is catalase positive or catalase negative. And the way I remember this is catalase sounds to me like cattle. And how do cattle usually hang out? Do they hang out in a line or do they hang out in clusters? As we can see in this picture, they're usually hanging out in these clusters. So that's going to tell us that it's going to be staphylococcus that is catalase positive. Uh, whereas streptococcus is going to be negative. You can also remember that streptococcus sounds like a strip, which would be kind of a line. And staphylococcus, I think of like a group of staph at work, which are going to form in these clusters. So as we talk about staphylococcus, for now, you can ignore the pictures off to the side. We're going to talk about the first branching point here, which is coagulase. So when I think of a team that coagulates together, I think of it as someone that like really sticks together well and has a lot of success in that regard. And for me, there's no better example of that than Staph aureus. It seems to be the organism that shows up maybe the most on step one. It seems to be responsible for just about everything. So that's why this coagulates, the staph that coagulates really well together, that works really well together, that's gotta be Staph aureus. Now looking at the pictures, what we see here is first the Nova bison sensitivity. And Nova bison to me sounds like noble bison. So if you were the noble bison, which do you have a better shot of taking out? The staph epidermitis, represented by the epidermis, the skin, or the staph saprophyticus, which is encased within this sarcophagus? Certainly you have a better shot against this unprotected epidermis. Then that's why noble bison sensitivity is going to be staph epidermitis positive. Now we're going to hop over to our streptococcus, which is our catalase negative organisms, and we're going to talk about it by the different types of hemolysis, the alpha, beta, and the gamma hemolysis. Starting with the alpha hemolytic bacteria, when I hear this alpha, I'm reminded of the term alpha male. And here with alpha male, we can think of superheroes being the classic example of what one might consider an alpha male. So here with optochin sensitivity, we have the crimson chin from the Fairly Odd Parents. So here we're taking an optochin sensitivity test. So we're seeing if these organisms live up to the standard of the crimson chin. And so we have two uh, organisms here, which for the viridans streptococci, which are the strep mutans and the strep mitis. So I think of a mutated mite. So we can see this picture of the mutated mite here, the Insectosaurus from Monsters vs. Aliens. And over here with Strep Pneumoniae, I think Strep New Moon EA. So with New Moon, I'm reminded of the superhero Moon Knight. And 
And so what we do here is we say, which one kind of lives up to the optician standards? Which one seems like a real superhero? To me, this guy doesn't really seem like a real superhero, but this guy already has the look of a real superhero at least. So which one is gonna pass the Optos chin sensitivity test? It's gotta be strep pneumoniae. We're gonna continue with our theme with the beta hemolytic bacteria and the idea of beta males. So the idea of beta male might be something that is societally frowned upon. Some might even say it's sinful, specifically bacitray sinful. And so we have these two groups here, which are the strep pyogenes and the strep agalactiae. So when I think of people who have done sin, where do they get sent? They get sent to the eternal flames. So here with group A, with strep pyogenes, I think strep pyrogenes, which reminds me of fire. You can think of words like pyrotechnics and pyromaniac, which conjure up that image of fire. And here off to the side, we have these bacteria, which are kind of on fire. On the other hand, if, for example, you're facing a lot of heat, a lot of spice, one thing you might do is drink a cold glass of milk to kind of alleviate that spice. And so here we have a, a strep agalactiae. So this lact part reminds me of lactose, which reminds me of milk. So here we have this bacteria that's jumping into this glass of milk. Gamma hemolysis is a bit different because gamma hemolysis is actually no hemolysis at all, but the gamma part reminds me that it grows in bile and also that there is growth in the 6.5% sodium chloride solution. So the sodium chloride here reminds me of a saltwater pool. And within this, we have two categories, which are the enterococcus and the non-enterococcus. So enterococcus referring to the digestive tract. Here we have the two bacteria, which kind of sound like feces. So hence, we have a picture of feces floating here to the top of the pool. So we see that the feces are kind of thriving in the pool. Depending on the composition of the feces, they're able to float, they're able to grow and thrive right here at the top of the pool. Meanwhile, the non-enterococcus bacteria, the strep gallolyticus, this word gallo right here, that reminds me of the Spanish word gallo uh, for rooster. And so we see this rooster here, which is trying to swim, but it can't really swim. So it's gonna float to the bottom of the pool, unfortunately. It's not gonna be able to grow in the 6.5% sodium chloride solution. And that does it. Using this algorithm, you'll be able to identify any gram-positive bacteria based on the lab tests.